Boom. Boom. Sorry, I was just joking around with Fritz here. He's so silly. Oh, how you doing this morning? We're so excited that we can worship with you guys this morning. And you know, let's get started with the word of prayer. All right, let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, thank you so much that we can come and worship and learn from your word this morning. Help us to not just learn your word, but for it to change our hearts so that we can become more like you. Thank you, Lord, in your name, amen. All right, K through fifth. Hey, Miss Wit, let's see what you got for us this morning. Oh, hey, Wit. Hey. You know we are almost through Ephesians six verses ten Ooh. through twenty, gang. This month we are doing Ephesians six verses eighteen through nineteen, and we're gonna go through these verses three times right now, and then we're gonna take it from the top. That's right. Let's do it. With all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints, and also for me, that words may be given to me. In opening my mouth, boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel. With all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints, and also for me. That words may be given to me In opening my mouth Boldly to proclaim The mystery of the gospel With all perseverance Making supplication For all the saints And also for me That words may be given to me In opening my mouth Boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel. All right, let's wrap it out now. Woo! Ephesians 6, 10 through 20.
Oh, man. Do you remember the first time your parents took you to the deep end of a swimming pool? Maybe you were standing at the edge just like this, and your parents were there ready to catch you, and you trusted your parents, but you're still afraid to jump in? Well, sometimes fear keeps us from doing what's best for us. And that's what happens today in our story with Israel. Why don't we open up our Bibles to Numbers chapter 13? Whew. Well, guys, in our story today, the Israelites have finally reached the land of Canaan. And when they arrived, God spoke to Moses. Send some men to explore the land I am giving you. Choose one man from each tribe to go. So Moses picked 12 men from each tribe to spy out the land. He told them, see what the land is like, whether the people are strong or weak. What kind of land do they live in? Is it good or bad? What kind of towns do they live in? Do they have high walls around them? Is the soil good for farming? Are there trees? Oh, and do your best to bring back some fruit of the land too. He probably wanted to try it for himself. So the spies left the camp and explored the land of Canaan for 40 days. And when they came back, they brought a bunch of grapes big enough that two men had to carry them. Then they gave their report to Moses, Aaron, and the rest of the people. But the report wasn't what Moses expected. 10 of the spies said, the land is rich and beautiful, but the people, oh, the people that live there are powerful. The cities are big with high walls around them and we are not strong enough to fight them. They were afraid and did not believe that God would give them what he had promised. But two of the spies, Joshua and Caleb, trusted the Lord. Caleb said, don't listen to these men. We should go up and capture the land just as God wants us to. We can certainly do it. But the fearful spies argued with Caleb and Joshua. We can't attack those people. They're, so, they're stronger than we are. They're so big that we are like tiny grasshoppers compared to them. Ooh, it will never work. And who do you think the people believed? They believed the 10 fearful spies. They even said, if this is what it's like ahead, it would be better if we returned to Egypt. We should choose a leader to take us there. Can you believe that? After all God has done for them, after all Moses has done for them, and still they want to go back to Egypt in slavery. Joshua and Caleb said, the Lord has a wonderful land he is ready to give us. If he is pleased with us, he will give it to us. A land that flows with milk and honey. Don't rebel against the Lord. Don't be afraid of the people living there. We will swallow them up because God has removed their protection and he is with us. But the people refused to listen. In fact, they said that Joshua and Caleb should be stoned to death. Then, suddenly, everything stopped. The glory of the Lord appeared in the tent of meeting, and the Lord spoke. The Lord said in Numbers 14, 11, How long will this people despise me? And how long will they not believe in me in spite of all the signs I have done among them? God knew that the people were afraid because they did not trust or believe him. Again, God threatened to destroy all of Israel and start again with just Moses alone. But again, Moses was the mediator between God and the people, and he reminded God of his forgiveness. So we may be wondering, where is Jesus in all of this? Well, the 10 spies gave a bad report because they forgot about God. But Joshua and Caleb didn't forget that God was with them. They had faith in God's power to save. Did you know that putting faith in God is the way that we please God too? Just as Joshua and Caleb put their faith in God's power to deliver them from their enemies and give them the promised land, we are called to put our faith in Jesus. 
who saves us from our greatest enemies, sin and death. Well, guys, let's pray for our time together today. When we pray, we are going to praise the Lord. We're going to repent. We're going to ask for forgiveness and, and help. And we're going to yield to God. Let's go to the Lord together. God, um, Lord, I, I praise you and I thank you for being a merciful, good father. God, I repent and ask for forgiveness that we, when we don't trust in your promises, that you would help us to trust in those promises, to have faith. And God, I ask you to help us to put our faith in you and no one else. And Lord, we, um, let's yield to you, God. Let's, uh, may, we, may your will be done. And in your name, Lord, um, we pray. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed worshiping with us together and learning about how the spies um, spied out the land in Canaan. Um, and parents, I just want to remind you to check out our Follower of Jesus page. Use that page um, as a guide for you to, to guide conversation with your child to see how their walk with the Lord is going with your time at home. Um, don't forget to check out our wrap-up video following this lesson and then an animated video lesson. Have a great Sunday, you guys. Take care. Bye! Attention class, I have an announcement. We are planning our spring field trip and need a few students to go scout out the land for our location. Uh, do we have any volunteers? Okay, let's send uh, Veronica and uh, Paulette. Please scout out the land and report back what you have found. Class dismissed. Wow, this is so exciting. We'll be like sisters together into the unknown. Um, yeah, so <laughs> I was thinking it might be cool if we checked out it um, on our own. Ooh. Really? Yeah, uh, you could be on one team and then I could be on the other team. That way we could have two different perspectives. Sound good? Great. All right, see you later, Paulette. Bye! Bye! Attention class, welcome back Paulette and Veronica. We are so excited to, uh, for you to report back on what you've discovered in the land that you explored for our upcoming field trip. Uh, who wishes to share first? Uh, yeah, Veronica, why don't you share first? Oh, I am so glad that you sent us a scout at the land. It was terrifying. There were gigantic machines so high people were forced to get onto them. They were screaming the entire time. What? Yes, and, and there were giants. Oh, they were big, furry, ferocious animals grabbing people and holding them hostage. What? There was a map of the land and it was big. And, and um, it was so big that we could have never found our way. We would have gotten lost. Miss Bumpa, so I highly suggest that we not go to this land on our field trip. Who knows what would happen? We could get lost, mauled by a giant, or, or eaten alive by a giant screaming machine. No! Wait a second. Did you even go into the land? Well, no. I just spied it out from far away. <laughs> oh, you silly scaredy cat. <laughs> you don't even know what you're talking about. You know, you are kind of reminding me of the Israelites. 
The what? The who? The Israelites! You see, God had rescued his people, the Israelites, out of slavery in Egypt. And then they traveled all the way to the land that God had promised them, called Canaan. But before they took over the land, God had Moses send 12 spies, one from each tribe, to go and scout out the land. Spies? Cool. What did they see? Oh, well, that's a good question, Veronica. You see, the 12 spies scouted out the land for 40 days to see if the land was good or bad. But when they returned, they had two different reports. Really? What did they say? Oh, well, <laughs> 10 of the spies said that the land was rich and beautiful, but the people who live there are like powerful giants. The cities are big with high walls around them. And they said, we are not strong enough to fight them. <laughs> Giants? Oh, that sounds terrifying. They can't go in there. Yeah, oh, but wait. The other two spies, Joshua and Caleb, reported a very different story. In fact, let's read here in Numbers 14, 6, where Joshua and Caleb say, The land which we passed through to spy it out is an exceedingly good land. Um, if the Lord delights in us, he will bring us into this land and give it to us. A land that flows with milk and honey. Only do not rebel against the Lord. And do not fear the people of the land, for they are like bread to us. Their protection is removed from them, and the Lord is with us. Do not fear them. Whoa. Joshua and Caleb were fearless. I wish I was brave like them. And those other ten spies were wimps. Well, you know, it wasn't that Joshua and Caleb were so much better than the other ten spies. It's because they trusted in God's promises and God promised to give them the land of Canaan. Instead of being fearful of what they saw, they looked for what God had promised them. A beautiful land with all they needed. They weren't afraid of the tall city walls or how big the giants were because God already told them they would conquer the land. Wow. God must have been pretty upset with the ten spies for telling everyone not to go into the land. Mm. He was. God was ready to destroy all of the Israelites except for Joshua and Caleb. <laughs> but once again, <laughs> Moses asked for mercy and God spared their lives. But you see, sometimes our fears can keep us from the good things that God has for us, Veronica. Yeah, I see that. And sometimes <laughs> we miss out on all the fun by thinking that Roller coasters are actually big, giant, screaming machines. What? Those are roller coasters? <laughs> or by thinking that Mickey Mouse is a big, ferocious, giant animal. What? That was Mickey Mouse? <sighs> yep. You really missed out, Veronica. Oh man. Mm -hmm. But don't worry, Veronica. I think we all can agree that there is nothing to be afraid of. Right? Miss Bunfuzzle? <clears throat> I propose that our next field trip should be to Disneyland. Ooh, yeah. I second that. Let's take the land. Amen. Ooh, uh, hey, Paulette. Can I try some of your popcorn? Oh, yeah, sure. Here you go. Oh, oh. And that's a wrap. <laughs>